With the new linear color workflow, Lightwave 10 now lets you get more accurate results faster and easier than ever before. Like most 3D applications, Lightwave functions in linear color space. However, most images as well as monitors and cameras operate in non-linear color space. Gamma correction is normally applied in these images and devices to offset this color relationship, allowing images to print and appear on the monitor as our eyes would expect to see them. But this gamma correction causes problems in a linear application. The linear color space means black is black, white is white, and it's a straight line between them. Gamma offsets this color space to match a standard, usually sRGB, which has a gamma of roughly 2.2. Gamma correction readjusts this relationship back to linear color space so all imagery can be correctly processed within Lightwave. There are three aspects to linear color workflow that impact Lightwave. Input sources, rendering, and output. These all must work together in the same color space in order to get the best results. As rendering and output happens in linear color space, the monitor is expecting gamma to be applied. When it's not, output images end up appearing way too dark and saturated. Here's a frame from a scene I set up to demonstrate. Now I set up a deliberately dark scene because it's in the darker areas where a proper linear color workflow really makes the most difference. So I've got the light set up correctly, as in realistic levels and falloffs for the way a room like this should be lit. And as you can see, it's so dark it's almost black. This is what we've dealt with for all these years. Even though I have these nice lights here with their inverse square fall off, which is physically accurate and exactly the way real lights work, I'm getting nothing down here on the counter or up on the walls. Not good. So what we used to do would be to pick a way to deal with it. My first inclination is, okay, I gotta bump up my lights. I increase the nominal distance or the intensity or some combination of the two so that my lights actually hit the counter and the walls. But when I do that, I get something like this nuclear hot near the lights and still falling to dark black in the corners. And a side effect of having these nuclear hot spots, as you can see, is that radiosity sampling occasionally hits one of these areas and you get these ugly bright samples. This is not what we want. And as we mentioned before, the reason is that Lightwave is outputting in linear space even though our monitors are expecting to display an image that's in sRGB color space. That's the disconnect. Okay, so we can fix this. One way to do it would be to apply the FP Gamma image filter to your scene. Look, it even defaults to 2.2, which is the accepted simplified gamma to represent sRGB. I could also apply this gamma in my compositing application. So if I pull the light intensities and nominal distances back to where they should be, and apply a gamma correction to the output, I get this. Okay, now we're starting to get somewhere. The super dark areas we saw before are elevated, and we see that there's detail there after all. This is much more representative of the way our eyes would respond to a lighting scenario like this. And no nuclear hotspots around our source lights. So now we've dealt with the output side of the equation. We've applied an sRGB gamma to the final render, which makes our lights behave how we'd expect them to, how they'd work in the real world. But you can see the problem with this image. The colors and textures look overly bright and washed out. And that's because we've color corrected the output, but in the process we've double corrected our input. Now what do we mean by input? Lightwave has a number of areas that receive color as an input. Color pickers are one, and there are a lot of them. Surface color, procedural textures, gradients, nodes, backdrop colors, fog, etc. Lightwave also uses images for inputs. Background plates, texture maps, displacement maps, normal maps. Now up until Lightwave 10, Lightwave has always assumed that whatever colors you're feeding it, be it from a color swatch or a texture map, were in linear space, even though that was almost never true. Because as we've established already, our monitors are in sRGB space. So we've been picking sRGB colors or feeding Lightwave images from Photoshop or digital cameras that were in sRGB color space. But it really expects everything to be linear. Everything coming in should be corrected down to linear and everything going out gets put back to sRGB or whatever color space you're working in. The critical point isn't what color space you choose. It's that what you put in and what you put out match. Now prior to Lightwave 10, there were all kinds of ways you could correct the colors and textures coming in. Third-party color pickers allowed you to pick colors like you were used to, but would convert them from sRGB to linear for Lightwave. For textures, you could manually set the gamma for each one in the image editor, but all of this adds up to complexity and hassle. Enter Lightwave 10, which deals with all these issues in a simple, elegant way. Let's take a look. There are really only two panels you need to deal with to set up your linear color space workflow. The first is the CS, or Color Space tab, on the Options panel. Here, Lightwave 10 gives you the ability to set the input and output color spaces for all the relevant parts in one simple panel. 
you can set your display color space, which is a color space for the preview window in Lightwave. This even applies gamma correction to the OpenGL window, which is amazingly handy. That way your lighting, your textures, and of course VPR, they're all in the proper color space. You don't have to render to see the results, and you don't have to guess. You can also set your output color space, which is a color space that will be applied when your rendered images are saved. This is an important point because oftentimes you'll want or need to apply your final gamma correction in your compositing program, not in Lightwave. Having control over both the display and output color space allows you to see what your final composited result will look like, but output the file in linear space so you can do the correction over there. This is especially useful when rendering to floating point files like OpenEXR, which is becoming increasingly common. You can also control your output alpha color space, which is almost always going to be linear since alpha isn't a representation of visual information, but is really more of a data channel embedded in the file. Still, if for some reason you need to apply a color space, you certainly can right here. The rest of the controls deal with color correcting your input, those being color pickers and image files. You've got this selection of color picker controls, and from the pop-up, you'll pick the color space that these components are in. In our example, they're sRGB. That means that Lightwave will assume that your image files and color pickers are operating in sRGB space and at render time will convert them into linear color space, like this wood texture for instance. It's got sRGB applied to it already. At render time, since we told Lightwave that 8-bit files are in sRGB space, it will apply the inverse gamma to the image, which will end up in a linear image that will give Lightwave and us the results we're expecting. Lightwave 10 gives you options for several types of images, which is important. As we've mentioned before, your typical 8-bit color files like JPEGs, PNGs, PSDs are in sRGB color space. But floating point and HDR images like you might use for environment backdrops or open EXR images from a high dynamic range source are typically stored in uncorrected linear space. So Lightwave will automatically detect these different files and give you the option to treat them differently but you have even more fine control over your images if you look here in the image editor. Here you're able to override the default set in the color space tab if you want to. Maybe you have an OpenEXR that does have gamma applied or a PNG that actually is linear. On an image by image basis, you can choose how you want Lightwave to treat these files so that you can keep the proper workflow from end to end. Now that we've told Lightwave what color space our images and color pickers are operating in, we render and behold the glory. Now we see what we've been working towards. We get all the lovely elevation of the darkest areas and no nuclear hotspots that we saw when we'd previously applied gamma at the end. But since we put all our images and color pickers into linear space for rendering, they don't appear washed out when we apply the gamma correction at the end. Inverse square falloff lights and radiosity, which always obeys physics, will now behave the way you expect and you'll get to your end result much, much faster. And taking this one step further, the way that linear color space workflow has been introduced in Lightwave 10, by doing color correction on your input sources at render time, rather than having the change applied in the color picker or in an external image editor, means that you can instantly load up any existing scene or object and immediately reap the benefits of this new workflow. You might have to adjust some lights and settings to undo some of the things that we used to do before we had this workflow, but you won't have to deal with repicking colors or adjusting images. So as you can see, Lightwave's new linear color workflow now makes it much easier to get better renders faster and easier than ever before.